So today we're talking about purpose and how we can find our purpose. Do you believe that you were made for a purpose? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back. Happy New Year. I hope that you've had a beautiful holiday. I know Christmas this last year has looked very different than it has in the years past, but do you know what? The things that are most important, they are unshakable. They will never change no matter what our circumstances look like. And so my hope and my prayer for you is that you are to have just you are not shaken. You are steady. <laughs> And if you do feel a little shaken, if you do feel like, oh, I don't know about this next year coming up, uh, take a deep breath, go grab yourself a cup of coffee. We're going to talk about how you can walk into this next season with confidence, with peace and assurance because we need vision. Let me tell you that. We know that the Bible says that without vision, people cast off restraint. We begin to die. There's like something in the human spirit that if we are not purposed, if we're not walking out a, a vision, if we don't have a direction, it's almost like, what's the point? Why even get out of bed? And that's exactly where the devil wants you to be. And so we are going to address that today. So let me take a little sip of coffee. <laughs> And let's explore how we can discover our purpose. Well, the first thing that I want to say is that if you actually doubt that you were made on purpose, I want to address that for a second. Because in ministry, this is something that I do hear again and again. If you feel like you are a mistake, I just want to speak some truth to your heart right now. Number one, God is perfect. <laughs> okay? foundation. God is perfect. And number two, a perfect God does not make mistakes. Okay, you following? God's perfect. That means he doesn't make mistakes. And number three, God made you. Yeah. Just let that all process for a second. Because even though you may feel like your life was the result of mistakes of others, maybe you feel like you've been beaten, abused, neglected, uh, rejected, whatever it is, let me tell you there is good news. That even if you feel rejected, beaten, forgotten, God's vision has never left you. And he is for you. And he creates things with intention. And those things that look not impressive, that look unimportant, that look forgotten, sometimes those things are the very most significant to God. And that's, that's actually part of the gospel message, that God takes what looks like nothing and he makes it beautiful god makes all things beautiful in their own time and i pray and declare over you that now is your time you receive that just receive that uh so um i want to talk to you about purpose because when we come into alignment with our purpose, there is a satisfaction that fills our life. There is a joy. There is a peace that comes that no matter what the storm outside looks like, no matter if you're in a tunnel and you can't see the light at the end, which I think is how a lot of people in the world have felt during this COVID season. You know, there have been a lot of people who have really struggled in this last season and it has been difficult because there's just, it's almost like every day, every week we're pivoting again and we're learning to be very flexible and, uh, and that's an important skill. But, but when you know God, you are unshakable. It's like you are anchored and when the storm comes, when the winds come, your roots are just going down deeper. And, uh, and so no matter what your circumstances look like, there is a peace that 
holds you secure. Now, I want to just share a little story uh, from my life to yours. Just something God shared with my heart, or I guess did in my life, to prepare me for this last season. And so usually around this time of the year, uh, in January sometime, Nathan and I, Nate's my husband, we go away for a day um, or two and we take that time, we set it aside to pray and to make goals. So we just, we kind of want to start the year off kind of just exhaling, looking back at the year before, what God did, and then taking a new deep breath in, looking up to see where God wants us to go, and then kind of coming back, hitting the floor, and running into the new year. Now, we haven't yet done that this year. Um, I'm recording this now, uh, January 4, but we do plan to do that. But last year, let me just tell you what happened. When we took this time um, to plan for the year coming, um, never in my life before has this happened. Never. In fact, <clears throat> I'm kind of one of those, uh, I really do believe that goal setting is huge, that it helps us to just kind of be disciplined. It helps us have uh, you know, it's like a spine of your body, I would say, having like goals and, and it just helps you to walk out, you know, fail to plan, you plan to fail. I really do believe that. So anyway, usually I am the person that has, you know, pages and pages of goals for myself, for my family, for ministry, for my marriage. You know, I have different sections and I make tons of goals. And this last year, when I came, I, I had goals for myself personally, my relationship with God, my marriage, my family, but I, I, I had no uh, professional goals. Like the Lord would not give me vision to see. And now I understand why. But, <laughs> but uh, it was very frustrating to me because never before had that happened ever in my life. Uh, often I would sit, I would pray, I would ask, God would show me these huge things and then I would begin to run and that didn't happen and it was very frustrating for me and that is something I, you know, I explained to my husband uh, quite often and he was just like, just go back, just get something. Sharon, this is not like you. You need to have some goals. I was like, I know, I just, I know, I, God's not giving me anything. And now I know <laughs> that, uh, that God was, I was in a season of, of not going. I was called to a season to stay. And I can just see the kindness of God because even though it was frustrating to not have like a clear vision, it was, um, it was life giving to me to know that I had his permission and not just his permission, but almost like he had asked me to stay, to remain. And it was different than my husband because he had a lot of goals and it was kind of like a go season in ministry for the outreach and meeting all of the overwhelming needs that were presented within our community. But for me, everything was consumed by my children and uh, just going deeper with the Lord. And that's what my year has looked like. But now that I move into a new year, um, you know, God, God gives me a different word at the beginning of every year. And uh, <laughs> I'll share with you what my word was in January. You're going to think like, what were you going through? I was okay. I just had heard this prophetic word in my ear that when I told Nathan, he looked at me like, he's like, are you talking to the devil? Because <laughs> like, that doesn't sound like a God word. And it really didn't. And it was a word I was embarrassed about. And I had written it down and kind of just tucked it away and just was asking the Lord again for something new. But I had heard death over <laughs> 2020. Um, you know, yeah. So it was one of those things that when, when you hear God speak to you in that way, you kind of just want to be like, is that you, God? I rebuke that in Jesus' name. You are a God of life and I'm speaking all these things. And anyway, God does speak if we, if we have ears to listen. And thankfully in autumn, it was September of this last year, 
God gave me the word for this year already. And he had said that the next year is going to be a year of rebirth and new life. And so he has just given me vision to see ahead because how many people know that hope deferred makes the heart sick? And after a while, you can just feel like sick when you don't see kind of that vision, which is, you know, I think of Joseph and how God gave him a vision and that carried him through all of those difficult times. And even Jesus, right? Jesus, he, he said, for the joy set before me, he was able to endure um, the cross, which I mean, that is just next level example. Uh, nobody has experienced that kind of anguish, but we do need to have a vision, a hope, something to look forward to. And so um, I think that that is a really helpful discipline in my own life just to, to pause at the beginning of every new year, um, to, to look back, to, to give thanks for what your year before has looked like, and to look up and ask God for new direction and kind of just get your marching orders for the upcoming year. And so I want to talk to you about how you can do that. And so uh, something that I have heard said before and something that I observe really to be true is that, you, you know, we can often think that joy or happiness and depression are like on a scale and it's like depression is on this side and, and happiness is on this side and if you are not happy then you're depressed. You know, it's very black and white. Um, I do not believe that that's how emotion, I mean, there's sadness and happiness, but I believe personally that the opposite of, of depression or a sense, I would feel like depression is almost like this, this sense of hopelessness. The opposite of that is, is hope, is vision, is purpose. So if you don't have a purpose, or if you are feeling depressed, you need purpose. If you have a lack of purpose, I can say with full confidence that you probably do not feel satisfied, that there's an emptiness in your life. And in ministry, when I see people who are struggling uh, with depression or with addiction or with self-harm, all of these things that come, these negative afflictions, it's usually because um, they are not walking a purposed life or their purpose is self-directed. And I wanna talk about that because there is a difference between what I would say is a self-directed purpose and a spirit-directed purpose. And the difference is this. When you have a self-directed purpose, you are in the center of every single thing that is most important to your life. Your purpose is to be successful. Your purpose is to get the job. Your purpose is to get a lot of money, get the house, go on a holiday, travel the world. Your purpose completely centers around your own happiness, your own accumulation of wealth, power, success, whatever it is, a self-directed purpose is completely directed by self. What feels good to you? So you, there's my dog, sorry about that. <laughs> Let me take a sip of coffee. Enjoy my dog barking. So a self-directed purpose is actually the kind of purpose that our culture, our society, the world in general, kind of peddles to humanity as the thing that will make us happy. Um, and of course, there's a happiness that comes for a while. But let me just give you an example. So I'm just gonna grab the lid of my candle because that's what's here right now. But let's just say this circle represents your life. So if you are living a self-directed life, you can do everything to fill this circle full. And you might. You might get all the things. You might do all the things. You might get to the top. But once this circle is full, there's nowhere else for you to go. And, and there's a, a lack of satisfaction. After a while, 
you will not be satisfied with just filling yourself. And this is what Jesus already came and told us, but this is what the enemy, Satan, wants us to live for. Self, what feels good, do it. What you want, get it. You, what makes you comfortable, pursue that. Forget about everyone else. Everyone else is an enemy to you getting filled with you. So again, this will satisfy for a time and it will never fully satisfy. It's a counterfeit. It's an, in, it's an imitation of the satisfaction that God came to give us. Now, on the flip side, there is what I would call a spirit-directed purpose. And a spirit-directed purpose seeks to bring whatever I have, whatever is in me, seeks to bring it to the world to make, or wherever you are, where, your, your workplace, your family, wherever you're positioned, a spirit-directed purpose will bring what you have, what may, it might feel like little, but you bring, you show up to make wherever you are better. That's what it, it actually pulls out of this life. It actually pours this life. Now look, if, if you are a person that's going to give to what is outside of you, look how much you can do. <laughs> it's limitless. All the space around this, it's limitless. You can literally pour out. And this is the secret of a life in Christ. There is such joy that comes in pouring out our life onto others. There is no ceiling to the satisfaction that can be found in pouring out our life. And so firstly, you need to, to do a quick self-evaluation and just evaluate, have I lived my life with a self-directed purpose or have I lived my life with a spirit-directed purpose? Am I essentially, am I living for me or am I seeking to live for others. Um, just do a quick little evaluation right now. Okay, so now I want you to, wherever you are, evaluate uh, what breaks your heart. This is step two in finding your purpose. Evaluate what breaks your heart. Now, if you are living a self-directed life, the things that break your heart are probably um, all of the people who, you know, disappointed you. It's the person who betrayed you. It's the job you lost. It, it breaks your heart that you you don't have enough money. It break everything that breaks your heart that troubles your heart the most is about you. Okay. That's a big red flag that you have lived a self-directed life and that you are probably not very satisfied and might be struggling with depression, okay? <laughs> On the flip side, if you are living a spirit-directed life, um, your vision and the things that break your heart will generally exist outside of you. So you might have, you, you may, maybe you've traveled and you've seen living conditions around the world and it just breaks your heart to know um, just the children living in the slums of India who are, you know, working and just the abuse, or, or, you know, maybe, uh, maybe human trafficking is something that just burdens your heart. For me, the thing that breaks my heart, um, is the thought of any person uh, living an eternity apart from the goodness of God. There is nothing that breaks my heart more than seeing a, a soul separated from the goodness of God for all of eternity. It troubles me, it breaks my heart. And I know because it's such a rattling um, cry, of pain in my heart and I've cried many tears over it. I know that I have been created to be part of the solution. And so if, if global pollution is something that breaks your heart, that you, you're, you're troubled by it. If, if, um, 
whatever it is, just stop and evaluate right now. I know people that, people at the outreach, people that come to volunteer and their hearts are so broken uh, to know that there are homeless people. There are people who are forgotten. There are people who are treated like worse than dogs. And, and so they come and they're part of the solution. They're living a spirit-directed life, bringing what they have and being an answer to the thing that breaks their heart. So whatever breaks your heart, if it's for the good of more than just you, it is likely something that you have been created to be an answer to. And so your purpose likely is aligned with that area. One of the mistakes that we can make in the body of Christ is to assume that every Christian is going to have the same burden. And although all Christians should have similar burdens in the the, the major things, we, we should all care for the poor, uh, we should all care for the lost, we should all care for uh, the gospel to go out into all the world, there will be different ways that God has graced us, different places, communities. Um, he gives us different giftings and graces. And Paul even talks about that. And I love that. I love that Paul so clearly says, he's like, I'm called to the Gentiles. That's what my assignment is. I'm called. And he says, but you are actually called to the Jews. And so he knew that there were different assignments given to different followers of Christ. So stay in your lane. <laughs> Don't think that because you're in your lane, it's the best lane. God may have called you to be a to be an answer in the fashion world. Maybe God has positioned you in the middle of Hollywood to be a voice. <laughs> For his name in Hollywood. We cannot be judging or thinking I'm more spiritual because my burden aligns or looks more holy. That's nonsense. Be obedient to who God has created you to be. What God has fashioned you for. Um, you are so necessary. And never ever, never ever diminish um, the your value. Because I think what we can often do, and this is something that police actually say happen at the scene of crimes. Often crimes don't get reported because people just assume someone else has seen it and already called in. And I think we do the similar thing with our lives. We assume we're not necessary because some someone else will come along. Someone else will be the answer. Well, guess what? If you've seen a problem, you are supposed to be part of the solution. So stop what you're doing, pick up your phone, call God and ask him what you're supposed to do. Okay. And I, I tell you, it will bring satisfaction to your life. If you are feeling like you don't have purpose, if you are feeling like depressed, like there's this cloud over you, let me just tell you, shake it off. Stop looking at yourself, lift up your eyes and consider there is someone out there who needs what you have. Okay, <laughs> step, so that's step two. Now, step three into walking out your purpose is to just take a baby step forward. So often we get this vision, this huge thing that we're like, I want to stop this. I hate that children are being sexually exploited. And then we come and we show up in our day and we're like, well, I'm just gonna go about my day living for me. So we're living our daily lives self-directed, but there's like, when we step back and look at our life, we want to live this spirit-directed life. So how do we get from living out our daily lives completely directed by ourself and what we wanna do to living our daily life um, for others. And so I would just say start with a baby step. Number three, start with a baby step forward. Where you are today, just ask yourself, what can I do today to be an answer to what breaks my heart the most? For some, it might just begin with picking up a book. Picking up a book about human trafficking, educating yourself. If global hunger is something that grieves your heart, 
Maybe you need to just go to a website, give some of your money. Yeah, instead of buying that Amazon purchase that you don't need, send it away to someone else that does need it. These simple, simple things. There's that old saying, you know, how do you eat an elephant? Which is horrible. Who wants to eat an elephant? Nobody wants to eat an elephant. But I, I guess that this is a helpful saying. I don't know, but I'll include it. So how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. It's still gross. I don't want to eat an elephant. But the principle remains. If there's something huge, something massive that looks overwhelming and you're like, well, how do I do this? Just start little by little. A couple years back, I went to a retreat with my husband and I met a really incredible woman. She was one of the first women who were on the ministry scene um, in her denomination. She was just really a forerunner. And so I kind of sat at her feet and asked her a bunch of questions. And, and I just said, how did you, how were you able to just, with so many criticizing voices, how were you able just to walk out your call from God? And she just said, you know what? I began my day just asking God, God, what does obedience look like for me today? And she just began her day like that. And then at the end of her day, she would just check in and she would just say, God, was I obedient to you today? And just this life of constant surrender. And it's so ministered to me because I think uh, we can all say as believers that we want to live our lives for God, but really we walk out our lives for the approval of other people. Um, many of us do that. I have definitely walked through many seasons doing that. And at the end of the day, I want to be obedient to God. I want to do what God's asked me to do. He is the one that I'm going to answer to at the end of this life. So we are called by God to give our time, our talents, and our treasure. The Bible says that wherever your treasure is, your heart will be also. So here's a personal life hack assessment that takes two minutes. If you want to know where your heart is, what you're actually giving your life to, um, I want you just to open your phone. Go into your mobile banking app and just take a peek at your bank statement. You may believe that you are living your life one way, but wherever your treasure is, wherever your money goes, that's actually where your heart is. So if you want to know if your walk is aligning with your talk or even with what you think, because, you know, we can be very deceived the heart is deceitfully wicked. Your treasure will always dictate what is most important to you. What have you been given, giving to? You might want to look back a couple months and see. You might get a better idea because it was a, a, an exceptional season that we were just in where we do usually give to others. So take a, take a couple months back look. See where your treasure is. See where your heart is. Step four. Make a plan. Make a goal for your day. Make a goal for your week. Make a goal for your months. Break it down into chunks of time and actually evaluate. Now, you may have far more than just one purpose. I certainly do. Um, you know, and you may wear di many different hats. If you are a parent, if you have a profession, you, you have many, many different responsibilities. So do this for everything that you've been purposed to do. That's what I do. I break my life down into different areas. So um, I will break my goals down into personal and physical, mental, emotional, spiritual goals for my own life. Um, the most important goals that I have are always at the top and they're my God goals. So what are my goals in my disciplines with God? How am I growing closer to God every day, every week, every month, every year? What am I what am I doing? How am I positioning myself? Am I just too busy to do these things? That's an important um, important thing to evaluate. And then with my marriage, with my, my beautiful children, with my relationships. And my relationships are always terrible, which I feel so bad for my... I just had a friend texting me today and she's like, Hi, are you there? <laughs> I, 
I'm sorry. I'm, I can be a really bad friend. But that's one way maybe in this next year I can really work on growing better in. Lastly, but certainly not least, is number five. I just want to throw this in because I believe that this is one of the most important disciplines any person can have, especially a person of faith, but it is practice gratitude. It is so, so important. Uh, we know that God says that his will for us in Christ Jesus is to give thanks. And so when I hear people saying, you know, what's my purpose? What am I on earth for? God makes it very clear that we are to give thanks in all circumstances. So no matter what your life looks like, lift your eyes up and praise. Give thanks. I remember when Ann Voskamp's book, 10,000 Gifts, came out and just reading that and beginning to write down every day. Just, you know, starting with like 10 things, 10 things that I'm practically thankful thankful for actually physically writing them down there's something that happens when we physically write down things here's the thing with thanksgiving um when we take a moment to practice gratitude it's almost like we're overwhelmed we're like oh i could go on forever there's so many things but then when you become disciplined to write them down you get like 10 15 20 and you be you have to start thinking oh what else? And it opens up your vision to see things that you wouldn't actually see unless you had paused to see them. It's like stopping to smell the roses. And it really does make life so much more rich and beautiful and rewarding. And in the same time, you're worshiping, you're practicing worship. So it's just such a beautiful discipline. And uh, I really believe that it will bless your life. So I pray and I hope that these things have been really helpful to you. Uh, let me know what you do to begin your year. Just write in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, please take a moment to subscribe, to like, and to share this video if it has blessed your life. I really sincerely hope that it has. And before I go, I just want to take a moment and uh, speak this blessing, this benediction over you. So you're probably familiar with it, but just close your eyes and um, just lift up your hands to receive as I speak this blessing over you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Be blessed, be refreshed. We'll pick up next week. See you then. Bye guys.